Antilia is a private residence in the billionaire's row of Mumbai, India, named after the mythical island Antilia. It is the residence of the Indian billionaire Mukesh Ambani and his family, who moved into it in 2012. The skyscraper mansion is one of the world's largest and most elaborate private homes at 27 stories, 173 meters, 568 feet tall, over 37,000 square meters, 400,000 square feet, and with amenities such as three helipads, a 168-car garage, a ballroom, nine high-speed elevators, a 50-seat theater, terrace gardens, swimming pool, spa, health center, a temple, and a snow room that spits out snowflakes from the walls. The architectural design of Antilia has been fashioned along the lines of the Lotus and the Sun. The top six floors of the building have been set aside as the private full-floor residential area. It is also designed to withstand a magnitude 8 earthquake. As of 2014, it is considered the world's most expensive private residence costing between one US dollar and two billion to build. The 4,532 square meter, 1.120 acre, land on which Antilia was built housed an orphanage called Kurumhoi Ebrahim Koja Yatimkana belonging to a charity run by the WAC board. The orphanage had been founded in 1895 by Kurumhoi Ebrahim, a wealthy shipowner. In 2002, the trust requested permission to sell this land, and the charity commissioner gave the required permission three months later. The charity sold the land allocated for the purpose of education of underprivileged Koja children to Antilia Commercial Private Limited, a commercial entity controlled by Mukesh Ambani, in July 2002 for 21.05 Indian rupees crore, 2.6 million US dollars. The prevailing market value of the land at the time was at least 150 Indian rupees crore, 19 million US dollars. The sale was in direct contravention of Section 51 of the WAC Act which requires that any such sale of land should be done after the permission of the Maharashtra State Board of WAX. The WAX minister Nawab Malik opposed this land sale, as did the Revenue Department of the Government of Maharashtra. Thus a stay order was issued on the sale of the land. The WAX board also initially opposed the deal and filed a PIL in the Supreme Court challenging the decision of the trust. The Supreme Court, while dismissing the petition, asked the WAX board to approach the Bombay High Court. However, the stay on the deal was subsequently vacated after the WAC board withdrew its objection. In June 2011, the Union government asked the Maharashtra government to consider referring the matter to the Central Bureau of Investigation. A PIL was filed a decade later by Abdul Matin against the orphanage and the charity commissioner's permission. As of 2018, the case was being heard by a special bench of the court. The building was designed by two U.S. architecture firms Perkins and Will, based in Chicago, and Hirsch Bedner Associates, based in Los Angeles. They were consulted after Nita De La Lambani was impressed by the contemporary Asian interiors at the Mandarin Oriental, New York, also designed by them. The building plan was approved by the Bry Hanbai Municipal Corporation in 2003, and construction started in 2006 with Leighton Asia initially taking charge, and completed by B. E. E. Billamoria and Company Limited. The architects altered floor plans and design concepts as the construction of the building progressed. The home has 27 floors with extra high ceilings. Other buildings of equivalent height may have as many as 60 floors. The home was also designed to survive an earthquake of magnitude 8. It is considered by some to be the tallest single family house in the world but others disqualify the Antilia because it includes space for a staff of 600. The interior design uses the shapes of the lotus and the sun. These two features are repeated throughout the building using crystals, marble, and mother-of-pearl. However, no two floors use the same materials or plan, the idea of the design is of consistency, but no repetition. The building has one helipad, however, it is not operational. The helipads have to be certified airworthy by the Director General of Civil Aviation, DGCA, and have yet to get approval from the Central Defense and Environment Ministries. The housewarming was done in November 2010, but Ambani did not immediately move in for fear of bad luck. In June 2011, almost 50 renowned pundits were invited to conduct pujas and address vastu issues in the building, after which the Ambanis took up residence in September 2011. Prior to construction, the worth of the plot and unbuilt house were estimated to be more than 1.2 billion US dollars. During planning, the house was expected to be the world's largest and most expensive home, 
with a cost of about US$2 billion. US dollars. As of 2014, it was considered the world's most expensive private residence. On July 10, 2017, a fire broke out on the ninth floor, and it was extinguished within a few minutes. Six fire tenders reached the building within 10 minutes of getting the call. However, the fire was extinguished by Antilia staff before the fire brigade team arrived, using a small line of fixed firefighting systems and fire extinguishers. The fire was confined to the 4G antenna and plastic framing of the vertical garden. On February 25, 2021, a car containing 20 explosive gelatin sticks and a threatening letter targeting the Ambanis was found near Antilia. The car was parked about 400 meters from the building on Carmichael Road bordering Altamount Road. A security officer at Antilia placed a call to the police control room regarding the suspicious vehicle, and the police rushed to the spot, joined by the bomb detection and disposal squad. After the sniffer dogs detected explosives, the bomb squad removed the gelatin sticks, which were found to be not assembled, and had no battery or detonator. The probe was led by the Mumbai's Crime Intelligence Unit head Sachin Vase. The case was handed to the National Investigative Agency, which found out that Vase was himself involved in this incident, and he was arrested. Tata Group former chairman Rutan Tata said Antilia is an example of rich Indians' lack of empathy for the poor. Tata said, the person who lives in there should be concerned about what he sees around him and asking how he can make a difference. If he cannot, then it's sad because this country needs people to allocate some of their enormous wealth to finding ways of mitigating the hardship that people have. It makes me wonder why someone would do that. That's what revolutions are made of.